Number one. Katya approximates pi correct to four decimal places by using the following expression, that whole thing that is here. ¿cierto? So we need to calculate Katya's approximation of pi correct to four decimal places. And essentially, we just need to figure out what number this whole thing gives us. So the easiest way, I think, is using your calculator. So we pop out our calculator. We put three plus that whole thing. Now, how do we put that whole thing into our calculator? There's a couple ways. I think the easiest is the following. You press alpha, this green button here. You press y equals. It brings up this mini uh, menu, ¿cierto? And in this mini menu, you press the first one, ¿cierto? The first one. And you get that fraction, see? And so using this, it's suddenly very, very easy to plug in. So I put one on top, six on the bottom. I use this function thingy majingy again because we have another fraction, and boom, we have it just like the problem. We press enter, we get this, ¿cierto? The only drawback is that you almost always get the answer in fraction, but that's no problem because we can just, you know, plug it in again, and we get this, ¿cierto? So our answer was 3.14, give me one second, 6, 7, 8, and another 8, see? So if we're making it correct to four decimal places, well, let's count four decimal places. Here we have our first one, our sec, whoops. Okay, apparently that's not how it works. We have our first one there, our second one there, our third one, and our fourth one, ¿cierto? So now, because it's correct to four decimal places, we take the fourth one, which is this seven here, and we compare it to the one next to it, ¿cierto? And so comparing it to the one next to it, do we, do we like round it up or round it down? If it's from 5 or above, ¿cierto? which would be 5 to 9, we go up. ¿cierto? If it's 1 through 4, we go down. This 8 is from 5 through 9, so we round it up. Our answer for part A is going to be 3.1468. Part B, calculate the percentage error in using Katya's four decimal place approximation of pi compared to the exact value of pi in your calculator. So what the heck is percentage error? Well, it is how far off my estimation is. So what I can do is pull up my formula booklet, which is right around here. We look for, what was it called again? Um, percentage error, and it's there. ¿cierto? So we have VA minus VE divided by VE. I'm going to pull this on the side, but you know that it's in your formula booklet. Um, we have E being equal to absolute value of VA minus VE divided by VE. All of this times 100%. See? So relatively easy. Just make sure that you are organized in your steps. The VA we said was approximate. See? The VE is like the actual one or the exact. So exact is going to be pi on calculator. Approx is going to be 3.1468, which is from part A. See? All right. Um, so if I plug this into my calculator, some of you are probably thinking, how in the heavens do you plug in a absolute value? ¿Cierto? Now, I'm pretty sure there's a way, but I'd rather just be practical. An absolute value is all, all it does is turn your number, it turns your number positive. See? So if you have absolute value of, let's say, negative 4, this is just going to be 4. If you have the absolute value of negative uh, 70, ¿cierto? Uh, your actual number is going to be 70. See? If you have the absolute value of an already positive number, let's say 23, what happens here? Nothing, really. It just stays positive, ¿cierto? So all it does is turn your number positive. Um, so if we get a negative value, we will just turn it positive. See? That is the game plan. I will plug into the calculator now. It should look something like this. So we use the fraction thingy again because it's what I love. Uh, VA is approximate. We said it's this guy here, ¿cierto? 3.1468 minus the exact, which is pi. So we use our calculator to plug in pi. It's right below the clear button in my case. We have all of this times 100%. See, so it's just times 100. We see what we get. First of all, it's a positive value. So I can just leave it like that, ¿cierto? Second of all, oh, that's the answer. See? So we get 0 0.16575. 4. See? So that is for part B. 
and that is part A, that is number one. Vale? Uh, my advice here would really be like, be conscious of how the rounding up works when they ask for correct to four decimal places and stuff like that. Same with significant figures. And anytime there's a word that you don't understand, realize that it's a keyword, see? Percentage error, don't freak out. Is it in your formal booklet? There's more in there than what you think. 